The following is an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network. We had a really, really exciting camp. Uh, I thought we we had a, we grew a lot as a football team. The chemistry of our football team kind of came together over the course of a couple of weeks, and uh, so we're really excited about going into East Carolina, getting a chance to play in that stadium, and getting a chance to play in, in that kind of arena for our student athletes. ESPN News, eight o'clock. Uh, it's on the one hand, it's a blessing you get the national exposure. On the other. You're just starting. <laughs> Ruffin's been there a little while. He's kind of got a lot of horses in the stable. So, you know, how are you handling that when you've got prime time, but you haven't maybe had enough time to be ready for prime time? Well, as a coach, it's one of those situations that you always dream about. You know, we like to be under the microscope. You know, we, hopefully I, I like to think we thrive under pressure a little bit. So, you know, it's one of those situations where we're looking forward to going down there. You know, uh, ESPN3, uh, ESPN News, that, that's, a, that's a great venue for us to uh, showcase what we can do. Ruffin McGill said yesterday that he's known you for a very long time. What's your relationship with him, and how is it possible that at 33 he's only known you for a, a very long time? It doesn't seem like it's possible. <laughs> Well, I think it's one of those situations where our paths have crossed several times uh, on the coaching circuit, you know, through conventions and just over the course of years. But, uh, you know, Coach Ruffin has is, is always been a, a great guy, uh, a mentor, so to speak, that you can lean on and uh, bounce, I can bounce questions off of. So do you expect Coach Ruffin to take it easy on you Saturday night? I, I don't think that's in the, in the game plan at all. You know, they're, they're going to come out and they're going to be wanting to win the football game. And, and we're going to do the same. We're going to come out uh, guns blazing and we're going to try to throw, give it our best shot. And, you know, obviously the best team will come out on top. When you look at them on film, uh, I'm sure that there's a lot. But when you look at their quarterback, you'll see what we just talked about that when you look at them on film. Dynamic. You know, they have great chemistry, those two. Uh, playing together for a long time, obviously they're one of the best tandems in the country, and we got to, you know, we got to put our best foot forth. And we got some things under our sleeves that, we, you know, we got to try to take advantage of some things that they do, and, and I'm sure they're going to be looking at us as well. Big uh, theme for your preseason camp was the quarterback situation. Looks like Quinn is going to start for you, mm -hmm. but uh, good chance to see Malcolm a lot this year too. Yes, I think Quinn Billman, we're going to go into the first game. He's going to be our starting quarterback. Uh, but Malcolm is a special player, and we feel like he's he can do some things that, to help us move the ball as well. So we're going to probably try to you know have a pack. Similarities and differences between the two. Uh, Quinn is more your traditional drop back passer, but he can still extend plays with his legs. You know, I think that's one thing some people underestimate him with. Uh, Malcolm is a, you know your so-called traditional dual threat quarterback. Uh, both of them do a really good job of managing our system and uh, directing our team. Fans look at this game either on television or in person. What is it going to be? What is it the characteristic of this team that you want to for the fans to see? What are they going to see out there? That's different? I want them to see a, a fast, uh, a fast, explosive team. Some a team that's flying around and it's a disciplined team that we're trying to minimize our mistakes and minimize our penalties. Uh, we just want to do a great job of putting a really good product on the field and making our Eagle fans proud. I think you probably have some players who are excited, maybe a little nervous, but you got to be feeling a lot of those same emotions too, seeing that it's, you know, it's your big debut. There's no doubt. You know, it's been a long time coming over the course of years. Me and my family, we've been looking forward to this event. Uh, you know, me coming on the field, leading a Division One program. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's football. I've been doing it for a long time, been playing it. So, uh, you know, it's just an exciting day for us. You spent a year at Memphis. You had a running against ECU. Does that help at all, like you know, in talking to your guys and preparing for this game? It does, just knowing uh, East Carolina offense and defensive background, and also knowing Coach Ruffin a little bit, just kind of knowing you know, what he brings to the table. That team is going to be well prepared, and they're going to come out there, and they're going you know, to do a good job as well. Coach, give us a little insight here. If you're looking at their personnel and yours, how do you get inside your kids' heads? I mean, you got one of the greatest quarterbacks ECU's ever had, mm -hmm. some other weapons. I mean, how are you selling them on this is how we can do something with this and not come back, you know, bruised, battered, and egos needing a lift? Well, that's a situation where, you know, a lot of these, a lot of our young men were, you know, at one point in time maybe recruited by East Carolina, and some of these young men that they're going to face against, they grew up with and, and faced in high school. So, you know, they get a chance to go out there and match their best against East Carolina's best. And uh, like I said, just like coaches, you know, they're going to thrive on the, they're gonna, they want the best competition. Our young men want to compete at the highest level, and this is going to give them a chance to showcase what they can do on a national stage. 
from an outsider's standpoint, it's hard not to imagine that your kids might come out and see Dowdy Ficklin and that crowd, 50,000 people, and maybe need to catch their breath a little bit. Do you have to almost, as a head coach, break the game maybe down into segments, whatever, to kind of you know calm their nerves and just take it, you know, one play at a time, for lack of a better term? Uh, in any situation, in any stage, you know, it's going to be some nerves as they walk into the stadium. But I think, you know, we try to do a great job in practice of simulating different game situations, whether through crowd noise or whether through just, you know, third downs, red zone. Every every game has a certain situation, and that's what we're always doing. We're always breaking the game down into phases. We talked a lot about ECU strengths. As of right now, in you know, late August, what, what are uh, NC Central's biggest strengths right now? I think, you know, our quarterback position, like I said, I feel really good about both quarterbacks going into the game. Uh, running back, we seem to have a little bit more depth than probably in the past years at our running back position. Our defensive secondary, uh, we got some experience back there. We returned three guys that received a lot of playing time. And we added some young guys that are going to help us win some football games as well. Uh, I really like our defensive end position right now. We got a good rotation going. So, you know, I feel like we got some, we got some good things as well to bring to the table. Going out into uh, you know, a stadium like down in Fickling, 50,000, like Brian was saying, uh, do you get the sense from your guys that they're ready for this, they're, they're embracing this? I mean, this is a big thing, but they're really looking forward to this? I, I really do. I mean, they've been talking about this entire summertime. Uh, and we got young men on our team that's played in the Duke and they've played against Rutgers. So, you know, this is their first rodeo. You know, they're, they're, they'll be ready for, for East Carolina. Well, I've heard a lot about it. I've heard at 8 o'clock is, is going to be a pretty rowdy atmosphere. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. How, how is it for you? Uh, do coaches get nervous for their debut game? Of course. I think that's just part of the nature. Not just this game, but any game when you open up, it's going to be a sense of nerves a little bit. But after that, at that first snap, that kind of all goes away and you kind of get into coach mode and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, we just talked about just, you know, regular coaches things, just things they've done probably to prepare his team in the past and, you know, talk, talk, talk to, uh, you know, just the, the realm of college football right now and where it's headed. Uh, those are some of the things that we discussed. N nothing really much about, you know, our team as far as facing one another. You could tell that the ECU game was fresh on every one of your kids' minds during the preseason camp. Everyone was, you know, had the state circle for obvious reasons. Do you have to remind them that regardless of what happened Saturday, Look at the bigger picture here. It's a long season, and you know maybe don't spend yourself just gearing up for that one big opener. Well, we, we we take it one game at a time. So you know all our efforts and all our thoughts right now have been focused primarily on East Carolina. So you know we don't even look to the second game. So you know we, we're facing this opponent, and we want to go into the game with a great game plan, and our kids want to prepare as well as they can. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.